Good morning, adults. One of the skills that we all have a difficult time feeling with if it's new to us is what we call a hinge pattern, or some people call it an RDL, okay, Romanian deadlift. Doesn't matter the name, but what it basically is is when we hinge at our hip and we pretty much eliminate motion from our knee. Now, there's going to be a slight bending, flexing of the knee, but it's minimal. In other words, I'm not staying completely stiff when I do this, right? So it's a really important pattern because I might have to reach out and grab something. I have to be able to distribute my center of mass differently to be able to control myself to pick, pick an object up that's away from me. Because if I lean forward and do it, that, the weight of that object is going to pull me off balance. But man, it's tough sometimes to get people to kinesthetically uh, perform this. They just can't feel what we're asking. A lot of times they'll round and they'll squat and they just tuck under. So what we have to do is we have to make it easier for them using various cues and ways for them to automatically feel how it happens. So for example, I could simply stand here and say, hey, imagine you have your hands full, you opened your car door, and you don't have your hands to close the car door. Just turn around and bump the car door with your backside. So bump and hit. Okay, so now I'm closing the door with my back, with my butt. There's the hinge right there. Okay, so that's a cue that can be used that might work for some people. Others, that might not work. They just, they do it and they still round their back. Well, how can I help eliminate this flexion of the back. Well, if I just say to my client, and I use this a lot, especially with athletes, when I do speed camps, and I want them to get in a defensive stance and not be rounding, I just tell them all, hey, put your hands above your head, and all I want you to do now is sit your hips back, and there you go, and now drop your hands. They automatically hinge for me because I've taken away their ability to go into flexion because I locked them into an extension pattern, then they can get into it. Another way is here, I have my bench. If I just put their toes under the bench and I say, I want you to drive your hips back, but don't let your knees touch the bench. If, I, if, if they start doing it and it touch the bench, I just reiterate, don't touch the bench. And then they start pulling their knees away. And I said, now put your hands on the, on the bench. And there they go. Now they've got a hinge. But one of the other ways, and I think we don't use it enough, is sometimes we have to take away limbs. The, the issue that we're having is usually, even though we say it's the knees, the knees are not the issue, it's the ankles. So when they start doing it and they squat and they're rounding, it's the ankle. Take the ankle away. So if I go down and put them on their knees and I say, hey, just put your, he your heels and your butt together, there's the hinge right there okay so now they're learning to hinge because i'm driving back real simple way to work on it you can start to increase the intensity by raising the hands up and this becomes much harder more posterior chain work and then eventually you'll be able to get them with a bar and they'll be hinging just great so teach them how to feel the movement so they can execute it quickly and easily without you having to remind them again. Just give them a cue that makes sense to them and then you got them. Okay, hey guys, make sure you're hinging, strengthen that whole backside, that posterior side. Have an awesome day, stay athletic, and we will see you tomorrow.